Welcome to Cut Right. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Jacqueline Choi. I was introduced to Jackie in an interesting way, through our mutual friend Kino, but through social media. We're going to learn all about Jackie and her running. I'm thrilled to have Jackie on the show. Thank you. Let's get started by introducing yourself to our audience. Tell us about where you were born, a little bit about your childhood. Uh, sure. So I was born in Queens, New York, but I pretty much grew up in a really small town called Leonia, New Jersey, which is actually where Kino grew up as well, which is how we became friends from childhood. Interestingly enough, uh, I pretty much did almost every other sport except running growing up. So I did ice skating, I did swimming, I did fencing, horseback riding. Um, I hated running, <laughs> but I was really, I was really active. Uh huh. Yeah. But at that time, you didn't like running. No, no, I, um, I hated running. You I hated, hated running. running throughout my childhood. I hated running in high school, in college. So it wasn't until medical school, actually, that I started uh, trying it out. Okay, so where did you go to college again? I went to New Jersey Institute of Technology. And what was your major? I studied biomedical engineering. Because you had plans of becoming a doctor at I did, time? yeah, I did one of those seven-year medical programs. It was an accelerated medical, medical program with uh, NJIT and New Jersey Medical School in Newark. Okay. Um, well, did you get your degree? In no, I only went for the first two years. I'm actually um, an attorney now, oh. of all things. So, okay, so you were <laughs> in, in medical school, you said, and you started running because? Um, so, I, when I was in med school, I had gained a lot of weight. I gained about 50 pounds. And um, interestingly enough, uh, I actually lost the weight through diet and exercise. But all the exor exercises that I did weren't running at all. Um, and everything but. Um, and then, I mean, I, I would kind of jog a little bit, but I wasn't that into it. And then the summer between my first and second year, I was doing an internship over at Mass General up in Boston. And I had an apartment right on the Charles River. And I would just see the runners go by. And everyone looked really happy. And, and I thought, you know what? I'll just, you know, I'll just try. So I went to the local running store, got a map of the Charles River. And it was really cool. They give you these... Um, different distances between all the bridges. And so in the beginning of the summer, I was running, I don't know, it's embarrassing. I, I, I'd call it more like walking. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but by the end start of the, somewhere. Yeah, but by the end of the summer, I was running up to 20 miles at a time. My God, one summer? Yeah. Uh, okay, so. but you started walking, running, and then running, running. Yeah, I started off really slowly. Everybody was passing me, but I didn't okay. care. That's right, that's right. Other than the beautiful scenery of the, the Charles River yeah. and, and seeing the other runners, what made it different? I think when made it different was that I actually just gave it a chance because uh -huh. I had such a preconceived notion of what running was like and I didn't I didn't understand that you could just run I think prior to that I would I would sprint and you can't really sprint for a really long time that's right mm -hmm. and I think running is just all about the mental anyway okay okay but you're now an attorney so what made the transition from medical school to a new career so Actually, it's a really long story, I'll make it uh, short. but I'll make it super short. So I actually went to um, medical school for two years. Then I decided that I needed to take a year off and think about things. And that, during that time, I applied to grad school. So I went to Harvard for psychology. And halfway through um, my first year, I decided that it wasn't for me. And I applied to law school. And I went to University of Virginia for law. And I loved it. I had the best time at law school. Um, excellent. So I became an attorney. Excellent, excellent. So that's interesting that you were had the smarts to know that you weren't happy with the path. And even though you already made a huge commitment to medical school, I mean, that's two years, and your family must have been hoping you would finish. Actually, no, my parents were incredibly supportive uh, because I'm a really happy person. Uh -huh. And I wasn't during med school. So for them, it was actually a sort of a relief. Interesting. My parents are, uh, they're pretty awesome. Oh, they, they, they sound yeah. like it. So you were able to make that decision they with are. their support. Yeah, they're actually supportive of 99% of the things that I do, except for ultra running. <laughs> ultra running. Well, what do they think about that? Oh, they think it's crazy. They, uh, and, you know, in their defense, the only times they've ever seen me, or the most of the times they've ever seen me was, like, actually at my worst. So I totally get where they're coming from. Oh, near the end. Uh. Yeah. They, I mean, they see me at the end of my first marathon which wasn't pretty. And then uh, they seen me experience food poisoning during an ultra marathon. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. Do you work at the DA's office? Yeah, so similar in Jersey, it's called the um, prosecutor's office. So I'm an assistant prosecutor there. Okay, and what kind of cases do you prosecute? Uh, so I actually am in something called the grand jury 
section. So what I do is I get certain types of cases and I prep them for the grand jury and I present them to the grand jury. And so in New Jersey, in Bergen County, if there are certain types of felony cases, if um, they are to go to trial, they first have to be presented to the grand jury. That's interesting. The grand jury has been in the news recently, as you know, because of the Eric Garner yeah, situation. Exactly. Now, you're a lawyer. You can <laughs> explain to us, simple folks, <laughs> not lawyer <laughs> folks, why is the grand jury a secret uh, proceeding? So how do you describe it? I wouldn't. See, I don't know how New York works. Oh, it's different. It's different for New Jersey because, as far as I know, uh, in New Jersey, I have to be incredibly careful how I present my cases because it all becomes public. It does. Well, yeah, I mean, people can order the transcripts. I did not know it was different by by state because because that's the big thing in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. The uh, grand jury met and they decided not to indict the officer in this case. It's yeah, it's very different in Jersey because there are definitely cases that have been overturned because of a poor grand jury presentation. Oh, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I learned something other than running today. Yes. <laughs> okay, so there you are, prosecutor for the uh, for the New Jersey offices, and, and obviously you're running. So tell us about, you said your first marathon did not turn out well. Tell us about that. Uh, so my first marathon, uh, back then, so when I started running, I just kind of went with it and figured, hey, I'm running these miles, I might as well just sign up for a marathon. So I signed up for the New Jersey Marathon, and I pretty much made every rookie mistake that you could make. So starting with, I went out the night before. Uh, with my sorority sisters because there was a big to-do and I didn't want to miss it and I figured you know I'll just take the next day really slowly and then the next day happened and I got really caught up in the adrenaline so I went off way too fast and then I wasn't eating I wasn't drinking and then it started to rain I mean I finished and I felt so terrible because my entire family was waiting for me at the especially finish especially your parents especially my parents <laughs> they're, they're waiting for me I told them you know you know I'll be done by four and a half hours no problem uh, they were waiting for over six hours. Wow. And so that's, that was my first marathon experience. Well, it speaks kind of well for you because you had the willpower to finish it. You just didn't just walk off the course. Well, I, I, had, I was having so much fun for the first 20 miles, uh -huh. you know, and then I, I knew that was normal. And then the, the last 10K, it was completely my fault. Uh -huh. So I told myself, I have to do it again. And this time I'm going to make sure I do it correctly. Okay, so you repeat the... Uh... Yes, yeah, so I went over to the Philadelphia Marathon, and um, I did it on my birthday. So it's be after that, it became sort of a trend for me to run marathons on my birthday. Okay. And that was fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I, I finished, so you conquered the marathon. Yeah, I, for, I think I finished in four and a half hours, and I had a great time, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do this again. Okay. You did a special one on one of your birthdays, your first ultra? Yes. Tell so. Us about that. Uh, so I actually, this Kino's involved in this. So I yeah, I lost touch with Kino after high school, and then I went to one of the high. I went to his ten-year high school reunion. Like I mentioned, our high school's really teeny tiny, so everybody kind of goes to each other's reunions. And he said, "Oh, you know, I just started this running thing." Um, and then he mentioned the Knickerbocker, and it was right in the city where I moved back after law school. And in my head, I didn't really process a 60k. I just saw it as nine loops of Central Park. And, you know, I finished the race and it was fun. And then I realized, oh, my gosh, you know, I ran 37.2 miles. I should, you know what, for my next birthday, I'm going to run 50 miles. <laughs> and I remember this is actually kind of funny. So Kino and I said, yeah, yeah, next year we're going to run 50 miles. Kino ended up running 50 miles, I think, like the next month. Um, but I was a good girl and I waited and, uh -huh. I, and I trained. Okay. Yeah. So what was that 50 miler? What was it called? It was called the uh, Stone Cat 50 miler. It is a fabulous race right outside of Ipswich, Massachusetts. And it's a trail race. Uh -huh. So it was actually my first ultra trail. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty small race, but it's incredibly well organized. And they really make every runner feel special from first to last, which I was the last runner for that, uh, for that race. Um, they made this whole victory arch for a uh, human victory arch when uh -huh. I finished. Uh -huh. And I just, I just had a blast. Oh, cool! So you weren't upset being last. You yeah, just had a great no, time. not at all. I oh, mean, cool. the, so the reason why I became last was uh, I forgot my headlamp, uh -huh. and so when it got dark, I couldn't, 
I, it was really difficult for me to get through the woods. But fortunately, someone realized that I was moving a little slowly, so they got one of their volunteers to bike over to me, and he gave me his headlamp, and I was able to finish. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. It's so nice of them to do that. Yeah. Well, the ultra marathon community is great. Yeah. So I guess uh, that was on your list next. <laughs> Don't forget lights. Oh, yes. I'm going to run in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, right. So you repeated the, the next year, you repeated the, the Knickerbocker, you said. Yes. Oh, so after Stone Cat. So that was in the beginning of November. Um, I decided that I would run Knickerbocker a couple weeks later. And I had a great what? time. A couple weeks later? Okay. You become more Kino like here. Yeah. And then it's funny, uh, one of your previous guests, Dave Obelkovic, we actually ran the last lap together. Oh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Is that how you met at the, at the Knickerbocker? No, we actually met. Um, through a mutual friend. So our mutual friend, uh, Yi Ju Kwan, he was running from L.A. to New York, and he decided to invite a bunch of his buddies to run the last leg with him from New Jersey over to the U.N. building. And Dave and I, uh, we just started chatting. Obviously, we found out with the, that we both like to run, and we also found out, actually, that we both love chamber music. And he found out that I play the viola and that I'm, I'm decent. And so we started playing chamber music together. And, and we ran together. <laughs> and you ran together too. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. He was here, and he actually played. I think he played the violin, and he had a guest play the viola. Yeah. Well, maybe in the future broadcast, the future, yeah. we'll bring you back, and we can. Uh, we can play, play a duet, or bring a whole chamber group. I mean, there's so many um, musicians slash runners. So you now you are really a bona fide ultra marathoner with the 60k, the 50 miler. So I, I guess you, now you got to go up the up the ladder. I right? actually didn't feel like one. <laughs> didn't feel like one. What, what's that mean? I didn't feel like an ultra runner. I mean, sometimes even now I feel like I'm not a runner. I always have these little goals in my head. It's really silly. Um, I, I always tell myself if I do X Y Z, then I can consider myself a runner. You you are a runner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. It's kind of like a way to inspire me to do more well, things. Well, that's interesting. So it's kind of a mind game you play mm -hmm. with yourself. Totally. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Okay. Like I said, I think you wanted to go up the ladder, especially yes. with a friend like Kino. He's probably now pushing you. Well, now oh, you do so miles. this is where I joke that I fell in with the wrong crowd. And you were running around with the wrong crowd. Exactly. Huh? So, so many of my friends were running 100-mile races. And it just so happened after the Knickerbocker, I ran this... Um, it's this fat-ass race called the Delaware Water Gap 50K over by Mount Tammany. It's like on the um, New Jersey-Pennsylvania border, and I didn't finish it. And this was devastating to me because I always, I always finish my races. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go for something big. I'm going to run. I'm going to do my first 100-miler this summer. Okay. And because you couldn't do a 50K, you said, a 50-miler? Yeah, miler? that made sense, right? <laughs> you said interesting terms I've heard before. I'm not quite sure what it means. Fat-ass. It's, uh, it's a colloquial phrase, uh, word, that people use to describe a race that's um, not official. Um, it can be just as casual as someone saying, hey, we're going to run around the entire island of Manhattan, which is about a 50K. And, 32 you miles, know, yeah. Yeah, don't, and don't forget to bring your water and food. We might have some water stops along the way, but... Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. It's not an official. That mm -hmm. means you're not going to get any bling at the end. Yeah. So for this race, um, they did set up uh, an aid station in the middle, but they essentially said, okay, follow these trail markings, come back, and follow those trail markings, and come back, and there's All your right. 50K. That's your 50K, mm -hmm. which you did not finish. Yes. All right, now you can cut your challenge at the 100 mile. How did that go? It was awesome. So I, um, I trained for it. I, I, it. Actually, the way I trained it was sort of the Kino method. I just signed up for marathons, and I would uh, use those marathons as training. And then uh, three weeks prior to the 100 miler, I decided that I would run my first 24 hour race. As a, as a tune up to your 100 miler? Exactly, yeah. So I had planned to run for you know, maybe 50 miles or 12 hours worth. Um, but then one of my girlfriends who was at the race, she said, Hey, you know, I think if you ran the entire thing, you could podium finish. And I never podium finish. So I decided, oh, you know what? I'll just run for the full 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran 96 miles, which I wasn't expecting, and I came in third place. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And the best part was um, I had actually just taken the Massachusetts bar that Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so that Friday, it was like this weird, it has like this weird Friday night start. Um, so Wednesday, Thursday, I took the Massachusetts bar exam. Friday, I... You celebrated yeah, by... by running 24 hours. 24 because, even though you only had thought you were going to do 12. Oh, so the bar exam takes two days, huh? Yes. 
And, well, okay, you must have been a pressure cooker. I mean, a relief after you'd done it. Yeah. You completed it. You probably knew you passed. Well, I wasn't sure. You wasn't sure. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, I guess nowadays it's probably computerized and they tell you right away. I don't know. No, they, they get like, it's usually two or three months. Two or three months? Yeah. So I was really worried because, you know, I ran 96 miles and I had my 100 miler coming up in three weeks. I didn't think that was, you know, a really good thing. But all my friends were going to be at Beast of Burden. And uh, which is the race that I had decided that I was going to hey, run. Where is that? It's up in Buffalo, New York. It's very hot, but it's very flat, and it's impossible to get lost in. Impossible. Okay. Impossible. Okay, great. So um, that plus the fact that I had so many of my friends running, I figured I'll just you know sign up and see what, see happens. what happens. Okay, what happened? And I finished. It was really incredible. The first 25 miles, I kind of realized, you know what? I think my legs are a little shot, so I just took it easy, and. I ran it, and I thought, "Wow, that you know, it's that was it was such an incredible feeling." Because of the crew, the people were there. You yeah, know. I mean, the, the race is also just really well organized. They had fantastic aid stations, and it's one of those uh, races where it's an out and back. Um, it's four loops of twenty-five miles, so you run out twenty twelve point five miles, run back, back, and you see people. Oh, all, okay. the time. all the time, and everyone's oh, supporting yeah. Oh, each yeah. other. I can see that. Ah, and you, and you probably had your headlamps that day. <laughs> yes, I, I did. I did. I did remember to bring my headlamp. I know at some point you got married. Now, is there a story about how you met your husband? You're doing all this running and you're working. How do you have time to meet somebody? So I met him. I just I met him at a birthday party, and actually one of the first things that we talked about was my running, and he thought it was fascinating. And he, so he was a non-runner? He, no, he was a biker. A biker? Yes. He is now a runner. And a biker. <laughs> and a cyclist, yeah. So we, uh, we met on a Wednesday, and we went on our first date on a Sunday, and then that was pretty much it. Wow. Yeah. Obviously, he was supportive of your running because... Very supportive. And then he also kind of fell into the groupthink of ultra running. <laughs> and he ended up running his first marathon um, just back in 2014, a few months before our wedding. And then that same year, he ran, so he ran the New Jersey Marathon, which, which was nice, because that was also my first marathon. He ended up running the New York City Marathon. And then um, for our honeymoon, we went to New Zealand, and he ran his first trail ultra. It was a 60K over um, in the southern island of New Zealand. It's called the Kepler Challenge. The race is named after uh, the Kepler Track. So the Kepler Track is, is a 60K long um, circular loop yeah. that normally takes hikers three or four days. Oh my gosh, it's it, the most beautiful race because you're pretty much in Lord of the Rings country. Uh, oh. And, you know, we kept on stopping to take photos. We were definitely not racing, we were more enjoying the whole scenery. Okay, well, that yeah. assures you finished the 60K in a comfortable yeah. position. Coming back from our honeymoon, we had a stopover in Hawaii, and the Honolulu Marathon uh, was taking place. So I told them, I said, look, you know, you don't have to run the Honolulu Marathon. I'm going to run it because it's a fun race, and I've run it before. And we went to the expo, and then he bought a T-shirt. And so he said that he had to run it with me. <laughs> so it, like in, in the course of meeting me, he managed to run three marathons and an ultra marathon wow. in one year. Now, did you have any trouble getting in at Honolulu? Was that any trouble getting in or to Kepler? or these, oh, uh, Some of these things, like you said, yeah. they, they close out. Yeah, so Kepler is pretty much one of the most famous races in New Zealand. So you actually have to sign up the minute the second that it opens uh, their online registration. Wow. So I managed to get in. He actually was put on the wait list. Um, I wrote this whole long letter about how we're doing this for our honeymoon, but it turns out they actually give uh, preference for international runners, so they let him in. I guess they like the, uh, the, the dollars coming in. <laughs> yeah, and then for Honolulu, um, so this is kind of way pre-planning on my part, but I got registrations for us a year in advance because I think at that point the registration is incredibly cheap. So I figured, you know, might as well get the cheap registration rate. If we run it, great. If we don't, that's okay, too. Now, I think that one, you start very early in the morning because it gets hot, right? Yeah, I think, I'm trying to remember if it started at 4 or 5 a.m. Oh, it's very early. Yeah. And, uh, do you run on the beach at all? Or is it, what, no, no, that no. Thought. It's um, the Honolulu Marathon. It's very hilly, but it's pretty much all on asphalt. And um, I felt terrible because normally it's a very hot race. The first time I ran it, it was very, very hot. But this, the second time when I ran it with him, it was unseasonably cold. It was raining. So if you were actually running the race, it was beautiful because you'd see rainbows. I even saw a double rainbow. I was taking photos. Um, it was great. But if you were uh, not running and you were walking, 
wasn't as fun. <laughs> oh, okay, so well, it, I guess it was fun for you to go because you were yeah, together. It was fun, yeah, it was, it was fun for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was great. And for your husband too? No, so that was actually the first time we didn't run a race together. So <laughs> so he ended, So he ran the Honolulu Marathon on his own, oh. but he finished. Oh, I was very, very, very proud of him. Interesting. I think you said you'd done New York a couple of times. Yeah, so uh, I've been that. in the New York City Marathon Lottery so many times. I never got in. And then uh, I found out there was a pacing opportunity, so I signed up, and uh, it was so exciting. You I got, got to, in. yeah, I got to run my first New York City Marathon as a pacer, which oh. I, th which I would never have dreamt, you know, in a million years when I first started running, and it was, it was really exciting. And I think I seen photos. You and Lisa, you, you compadre. Yes. You guys wear uh, colorful outfits. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's part of like the fun. It's like to cheer up the, our fellow runners. Yeah, Lisa, Chow, and I, we do a lot of uh, pacing together. What are the qualifications to be a pacer? As long as you can keep a very steady pace, and generally you're only selected for time slots that are very comfortable for you. So generally for the marathon, it's at least 30 minutes. So uh, for the first time, I ran a 440, I did the 445 pace. This, this past year, I did the five-hour pace with Lisa. Oh, Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. And you, and you, I guess you recommend doing this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so much fun because you get to help other people basically yeah, meet yeah, their goals. Yeah, pacing is it's a different skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've only done it once, a one on one with my friend Joy Johnson. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was an awesome ex experience. Yeah. But I can, I can, I can tell it's, it's, wow, this is a little bit more work. Oh, than yeah, it, it, it definitely <laughs> is because you have to talk so much. And then um, it's a lot of psychology, too, because you have to kind of feel the crowd. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do they want a talker? Do they want um, like motivational speaking? Do you want like a drill sergeant? Yeah, yeah. Well, I had uh, Michael Ring here, and he mm -hmm. was a pacer with one of his. It turns out to be uh, they were high school friends or college friends, and they happened to be pacing the same the same number. Oh. He was the uh, the talker, and he pointed out highlights of where he went to school, where he was born, you know, <laughs> different places. So he made it a personal tour. Yeah. So it sounds like uh, they have, you have a lot of fun doing that. Mm -hmm. And well, I love talking while I run, so it's kind of the perfect job for me. Well, you ran it conversationally, so that was an easy pace. Yeah. Excellent. So I guess you recommend that to people that can't get in, look into pacing it. It's kind of a hard way of getting in, but yeah, I would, I would recommend. <laughs> Okay, but I think you also mentioned you did a, a, another one. I don't know if it was to Achilles, or you did a, a pacing for... Uh... Uh, yeah. Oh, so one of the best pacing gigs I've ever uh, experienced was um, one of my friends posted last minute uh, asking if someone could pace a marathon for a blind runner. And um, his name is Joe Bellantoni. And it's interesting. So he actually didn't become blind until he became an adult. And after he became blind, he decided that uh, he was just going to start running marathons and do an Ironman. So at that point, when he was looking for a pacer, he had been running a marathon every month. And so he needed someone to run the Lehigh Valley Marathon with him out in Pennsylvania. And so I volunteered, not knowing what to expect. And it was a really cool experience. That's it. Now you're tethered with somebody, right? Yes, you're yes, yeah, yeah. So we... Um, he had two he had two pacers, so he was tethered to me the entire race. But then we always um, had some other pacer just in case uh, I got tired. Yeah, but that was your first time. That was my first time. It was a little nerve wracking. Um, I guess they gave you the quick lesson, you know. Yeah. I, I had a blind runner here from Achilles, uh -huh. and he says he trains his his pacers. The, and the most important thing he says, if there's a crack coming up or, or a pothole, mm -hmm. please tell me. Yes. <laughs> so for this race, um, it's mostly a, an asp it's mostly roads, right. uh, but there, there is a quote unquote trail area. You know, for someone who can see, it's pretty much, it's no big deal. But on this trail that wasn't a trail, you know, there was like, um, there would be rocks, There'd be a little hole here, a little hole there. But and he had experience doing that run, or it was his first deployment? It run. was his first time doing Lehigh Valley. So, and you guys uh, somehow managed. Without... Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, he was great. <laughs> and you were great. I mean, you were, <laughs> that was oh, no, fantastic. No, 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 he, he was really impressive. <laughs> Believe yeah. me, he, I'm sure he's very appreciative of your help because, I, like I said, I had the uh, other blind runner, and he says uh, sometimes the pacers get excited, talk among themselves, and they forget to warn him about uh -huh. And you go, oops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I could see that happening. Oh, oh, but, he, oh I mean, he, but he was really talkative, so I, okay. I was just talking with him. Now, was that part of Achilles International? No, that was just on my own. 
But was he a part of Achilles? Oh, oh he is definitely part of uh, Achilles International. But that sounds like it because when he was when he said he wanted to do a marathon as an Ironman after becoming blind as a dog, that motivational thing only would come from an organization as awesome as the Achilles International. Yeah. They somehow inspire people that have disabilities. Mm -hmm. So just think, well, that's no roadblock in doing athletic achievements. Well, listen, we're almost out of time, so mm -hmm. I want to cover two more things. One, sure. Well, as I always said, my talks or my chats, what do you want to do professionally? What's in the future for you? Mm, I don't know if I should say. <laughs> oh, so you I actually, I, cases. So I actually love my job as an assistant prosecutor. Um, one dream of mine, actually, is to become a judge. Oh, mm -hmm. excellent, yes. excellent. Excellent. I think I put it out there. Okay, put well, in the why universe. not? Why not? You know, <laughs> uh, uh, judges got to come from somewhere, mm -hmm. and it is good to have judges that know the law. The, one of the reasons why I want to become a judge is I actually was a, um, a public defender in New York, and so I feel like I have a really good grasp of both sides. Okay. Well, maybe we'll see you on that Law and Order TV show you to be <laughs> a, a, an actor playing a, a Maybe part. a legal advisor, but no. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. And then uh, athletically, do you have any uh, challenges coming up? So like I mentioned, I keep on setting these mini goals where I think, okay, I'll be a real runner if I do X, Y, Z. So right now I've got to a point where I feel like 100 milers are not scary. They're totally fun, totally doable. So my dream is to either do a 200 mile race in gnarly terrain or to get competent in a multi-day race. Multi-day race. Mm -hmm. Oh, like the one at Lake Tahoe that uh, that opened up recently. Oh yeah, that's the 200 miler one. 200 right? miler, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know Scott Sheba and. Yeah, he's fabulous. Uh, he, he did it with his wife. Mm -hmm. I see bright things for your future. 200 Thank miles. You. All right. Uh, do you have a date for that yet? Oh no. So actually, um, my husband and I, Rob and I, we're expecting a little one. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, this uh, either late December or early January. Ooh. So I'm still running, don't worry, but we're kind of putting the ultra stuff well, a little I, bit I on hold. Think so. Well, they call that running with cargo, and uh, there's a yes. whole uh, protocol for doing that safely. Yes. Oh, so, cool. But my ob guide, um, she's cleared me for running, and she said that my body will tell me when to slow down and when to, you know, reduce my miles. That mantra of listen to your body. Exactly. Well, thank you. On that note, thank you for coming in. Thank you. This it was so wonderful. much fun. <laughs>